Oh, I see your face in the top. Oh. All right, cool. So now, <laughs> all right, okay. Um, so we're coming over, we're coming from the Blue Llama in downtown Ann Arbor. Check it out, really great place. Um, you wouldn't know it inside, but it's daylight outside. <laughs> So now you, we're passing, you got Jolly Pumpkin off to the right. And this is the new Sagenberg's Labs. All right, Brad, Brad's here to let us in. Hello, well, thank you. We're gonna give you an AirPod so that you're mic'd. Thank you. Here's your fancy mic. Is that your left or right? Just put it in and see if it fits. Yes, we can hear you. Um, we're still putting things together. The official opening is next week. Okay. Um, but just to give you a tour around and get you a sense of what's happening here. First, Don earlier alluded to llamas hitting each other. Okay. Happening right here on this wow. I call it Raging Llamas. Who's the artist on this? What's it say? Oh, I want to ask, Don, is it after Leroy Nine? Okay. Oh, no, Mary, please. I think it's Mary's. <laughs> Okay, all right, sounds good. Uh, come on in a little bit further. We want to make sure we make a little room so you can see all around. All right. We'll start in back with the cafe. Now, the cafe itself is actually going to be um, kind of soft launch up and running today a little bit. Um, we don't have like normal hours to walk by and the doors open, pop in. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of coffee, a little bit of pastries. It is going to be delicious here. Check out these tables. These are awesome. Right, I'll show you the tables. In the okay, table. sorry. No, 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 that's okay. <laughs> these pastries look delicious. And this is just a small sampling. We've got a dozen or so uh, pastries that are gonna be available today. So, okay. if you're around that time, you wanna try those. They are delicious. We also have our own espresso. You can see up against the wall. Okay. Uh, oh. Pastries. Roasted. Very specifically for this space, but very exciting. That's probably the best uh, macchiato of my life yesterday, and then no joke. Uh, yeah, I know, I see they, they're branded with the Blue Llama. Um, they have the Blue Llama logo on it. I know, very exciting. Part of our partnership with the Blue Llama. We've also got some Blue Llama gear up here. It's a uh, little fun to grab yourself a hat or a t shirt or a hoodie while you're around. Nice. Obviously, the llama theme continues since this is the Blue Llama Cafe okay. portion of this. Wow. Area. All that's needed is an actual llama. Well, we have a line on an actual llama. They might be serving coffee here. <laughs> so, the gallery is not done yet. But we alluded to a gallery. It's kind of a brief, unofficial history of uh, spatial visual thinking. So, you know, very cool concept. Uh, <laughs> we've got all sorts of stuff going on, starting from Maybe take your mask off if you're comfortable with that. If you're not comfortable with that. Safe. I don't know. Don, oh, Don's it ever. <laughs> okay, that's better. I don't know. Is it better? Can we get a mic check from uh, Sagenberg back at the 
Bulama, can you tell us? Anybody? Uh, yeah, Brad. Yeah. Talk. How about I yell into Shanley's ear? Since we're my business. Yeah, okay. just get a little closer. Get a little closer to Shanley and talk a little louder. We are good in it. In okay. Space. So maybe take my mic. Do you want to talk about some of the art? Is that why you're here? Yeah, I know. I, I'd like you to tell us about some of the art. So I'm going to give you my mic. Okay. All right. Take your job. So one of those years. All right. I have two. You have two ears. Wow. Yeah. I got two ears. <laughs> One, two. They're both Look the same size. <laughs> One, Sounds two. good. All right. Oh, um, I hear that. I hear, I have a voice in my head. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a dog and it's telling me to go hurt somebody. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> that, yeah. Oh, the other. Okay. So in the other voice, I have someone talking. So, uh, yeah. Uh, should we talk a little bit about the, the art? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. So uh, Brad, Brad gave you the quick intro, um, and he and I are working on this. Where we are aspiring now, museum museum curators. One of the best ways to understand how our museum people are doing things and their challenges is to be museum people. So it's not as easy as it looks, by the way, to curate your own exhibition. We we feel you. Um, the thing about the bees is that it goes all the way back to the fact that. Um, Humans use symbolic language, right? Words, written, spoken, and we use that to. We're okay, coming. we're coming back. So you have the most dramatic job. Okay, all right. Sorry, take it from here. Okay. We're gonna go to mic check back at the studio. Mic check back at the studio. I can hear you. All right, we got an official word. <laughs> Yeah, I think where you left off was talking a little bit about the history of the bees uh, and and the visual side of their right. language. So, so the, the, relevant, and the, the relevance is the, the big thing, which is human, as humans, we, uh, one of the technological advance, uh, advances that we've had is development of a symbolic language. What that means is I can express ideas through my words or by writing them down. And everybody believes that humans are the only uh, the only species on the planet to have developed a symbolic language, but that's not actually true. The other language is the honeybee. The honeybee has an actual symbolic language for storing and communicating information to other bees. And indeed, as Brad was mentioning, it has to tell the rest of the hive not only directions, but uh, you know, pretty precisely, but also is this a good place? Is this a great location for the hive when the scouts come back after scouting things? And so they've developed this, this dancing language. I find it interesting cool. because this is truly what an alien language would look like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's in 3D. It's because you live in a 3D world. And so a lot of this exhibit is trying to highlight the fact that um, these two dimensional forms of communication, we believe are, I mean, it's a tremendous advance, but it's still very limited. We live in a 3D world, and yet most of our communication. Uh, technology is in two dimensions. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have some, uh, uh, some cuneiform up here. Uh, in fact, we can go get it if you'd like to look at it. Yeah. Where is it? Is it back here right now? I believe it. If it is, tell you what. I think it did go home, honestly. I don't know if it's back there. Okay, well, I'll bring it in later. What's the yeah. second oldest thing that will be in the Oh, it's right behind him. Right there. Okay. So, besides the cuneiform, you'll have to just come down and see it for yourself. Uh, but another illustration of how uh, communication is technology and knowledge, and knowledge towards retrieval. This here is uh, a page of a papyrus scroll, actually, a fragment from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. And it's a great read. But you'll see uh, you've got. Writing here, you've got pictographs here because you know people are playing with hieroglyphics, pictures that you drew a lot of these things. But the, the regular your, your uh, sort of person on the street in Egypt actually did a, a demotic script kind of thing, and these all kind of came together. But the paradigm is still take the real world and represent it in a two-dimensional form. And this continues over here. This one, which is... Are you allowed to touch it? You are allowed to touch no, the Roman mosaic. 
This was recovered. This is about 2,000 years old. This Did you get the dirt? Approximately 100. Yeah, I mean, trying not to scratch it or anything like that. <laughs> By all means, it's a, this was on the floor of a, of a villa from a rich Roman. Uh, and obviously, they had a thing for cooking. In fact, Romans were pretty obsessed with seafood for dinner. But uh, this was recovered over here. Uh, and, and now it's a piece of art, but people were walking on this for yeah. years. Uh, and the point is that even though this has changed and it's, it's still two dimensional representation, and we're going to have some tablets out there just as a reminder. If you look at a web page, the technology of the internet, of HTML and web pages, are still 2D representations of abstract concepts. All we can do is show you this. And we're we're headed, but the is in 3D. Wait, how do, you, how do we do it on the video? The, the whole thing. Oh yeah, if you take a look at this one. How do you do this? Just circle it, surround it. It is a visual trick in a sense, but it also represents 3D in a very interesting way that's not true 3D, yet uses the third dimension to give you that concept. It's very interesting to see up close. You have to come down and see it. It's actually called perspective. So these parts actually come out towards you, but it's painted in a way that uh, this whole section here, you see some, some pictures of uh, the art of memory, that's his Gates's uh, treatise on. There's a tradition in the Western world that is parallel to 2D thinking, and it's around 3D thinking and spatial approaches. They call it, the Francis Yates calls it, the art of memory. But it connects to a real world as a shadow parallel tradition alongside of 2D technologies, which is 3D technologies. And it goes all the way back to the memory palace when people had to recall massive amounts of information back, uh, you know, about the same time that they were doing these scripts and other 2D approaches. Another technique was you memorize in your head, you, you create a space and then you put stuff in that space. And if you did that as a technique, you could uh, recall almost unlimited amounts of information. That tradition has continued. It was considered dangerous and scary in the Middle Ages, mm -hmm. uh, potentially, you know, heretical, because you could tap into knowledge like God, basically, because you could potentially know and remember everything. Memory was considered to be sort of this, this very sacred uh, capability. But what would happen if you as a human, just a mere human, could remember and recall everything. So it was terrifying to many people because it threatens power structures. Yet one of the most interesting parts, my little Please. side note, yeah. is that biblical scholars, monks, priests, would actually use the exact same practice to memorize the Bible. They inverted it as in put familiar surroundings and familiar people and then assigned biblical characters and places to them, which then in turn influenced the art of the time, which is essentially why everyone is white and European in classic biblical art. Fun fact. Sorry, Don, had to take that. It's one of my favorites. That is, that is a fun fact. Tweet the, tweet the pod is what they're saying. Tweet the pod. We can, we can turn off the pod if we think it's not helping us. How about now? Yeah, and uh, Brad's is loud and clear if you wanna, uh, if you wanna swap. Brad's is loud oh. and clear, mine is not. I'm loud and clear. Why don't I turn my head to Don? <laughs> oh my goodness, all right. <laughs> That is uh, a human, human microphone, huh? Let's just turn off the pod. Turn off the pod. Let's see if it just works better. Phone yeah, phone audio. Hey, can you do a sound check for us? Phone audio. Okay. Right. <laughs> we, can, we can do that. <laughs> what do we got over here, Don? <laughs> so this is where it all comes together. So we had just talked about the, the 2D, which is the mainstream information technology. And then there's that shadow parallel development, that shadow parallel 3D technology that goes back to memory palaces, it goes through the Middle Ages, it, the art of memory, and it shows up today in Sagan works. And, and the, the big idea here is the fact that people think in 3D. You think your brain is set up to model the world in three dimensions. 
we have artificially shoved it through a 2D projection for the last 5,000 years effectively. And we think we are on the cusp of tapping into the power of three-dimensional information exchange. Why is that important? Because your brain operates like that. It will be more natural to work with storing information in a 3D space, but you couldn't do it on a clay tablet. You can do it now with the technology that's available on the phone, through the web, and Sagan Works is out there and helping to lead the way to have you tap into 3D thinking. So we have throughout the space put in both 2D and 3D representations. And uh, so this Brule Museum is our way to kind of both being one of our own customers and getting to empathize with you guys and also showing how you can tell stories in 3D. So it's awfully self-referential and there's great espresso. <laughs> Just great espresso. We can't <laughs> emphasize that enough. We also have not hit upon our yeah, we space. Yeah, we yeah, want to yeah. make sure that we it's give them the credit as well. So Jube Activewear is a sustainable activewear company here in town that we partnered with very, very early in order to uh, see how we could use merchandising and uh, integrate the way someone's brand would feel in a Sagan. They have been a wonderful partner to ours. And so we invited them to be our very first pop-up retail business in the space. John, you want to say something? He, his ears were burning. This is John Ames. John, you got to speak wow, nice and loud for the audience. Woo, okay. He Sorry. appears if you say juke three times. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, this is really cool. It's a great opportunity to, to have a, a local presence here and uh, to advocate for sustainable brands and to advocate for being climate neutral and to have a really great coffee shop and have some really cool tech uh, combined. It's, it's just a good mashup and it's, uh, it's going to be going to be fun for, for folks in Ann Arbor to come see. For the people who come in, what's the one product that you want to make sure they see? Uh, I think the new recycled uh, uh, poly sun hoodies. Okay. And the women's tie tank. I like the tie tank. I noticed yeah. it on the model. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, and the women's everywhere pants are going to be coming. This is just the prototype that are. Oh, I love those. those. Our Brooklyn partnership has a few are made from. Uh, yeah, they're <laughs> But yeah. they're made from 100% uh, recycled uh, plastic bottles. So, cool. Yeah. Made it in Brooklyn and Thailand. So it's a fair trade partner in both places. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just actually going to move the mannequins around. So okay. Doing an opening. It's cool to, <laughs> it's like cool to see this. Yeah. 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 Um, it looks like you have your statement up here too, John. Yeah. Yeah. So we have the outdoor segment. I made a presentation yesterday on kind of immersive uh, retail experiences. And, you know, because we're about kind of being outdoors, uh, you know, being about the environment. Uh, we created this campsite stadium that people can walk through, learn about the Jube. It's on our website. It's on the about page. And we also have one that uh, goes through a Sagan uh, for the men's collection, too. And we'll have one for the women's collection. As a awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we're excited about it. And what, what's really nice about this is we, it's such an image-rich uh, way to show product. And then it's also cool just to have people... When they when they go into the Sagan, I always like to hang out and go by the water and just kind of see the water. And I love what you guys are doing with adding things like sound and adding things like video on the walls. And uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be the way to, for retail you know businesses on the, to the shop to get away from that that static kind of photo. Awesome. Thanks, John. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you. All right. I'll, <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll move the I'll move the later. Okay. <laughs> Um, All right, so that's basically it. I mean, we're still setting up. You can see it's a little bit of chaos, a little bit of noise, and that's how we like it. We are going to be soft launch today. Feel free to stop by for a pastry or a coffee. Uh, and then as of next weekend, we'll have all the exhibits up, all the Sagans working. Uh, you can experiment with everything. I look forward to seeing you here. Thank you for stopping by. Um, do we have any questions, Matt? Is there any questions that you'd like us to ask Brad or John before we leave? Uh, no, I think we're all set. Thank you for the tour. Oh, I have to be really close. Wait, get really close to the mic, Matt, because I can't hear you. I said, we're all set. Thank you for the tour. <laughs> oh, wait a sec.
They kind of I can't hear him. I can. He's like trying to talk, but I need a connection. Here's one of the pods. Okay, I'll take both pods. It's only natural. Press. Yeah. All right, Matt. Try again. Tell me your question. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Okay, I was just saying we're all set. But thank you for oh. the tour. <laughs> all right, they have no questions. All right. <laughs> we're full of <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone. We're gonna. We're gonna stop and uh, I think up next we have the product round table. Is that right, Matt? That's right. All right, cool. So stay tuned, that'll start at 11. We'll have Ben Maza um, up there talking about product and I think our senior technical artist too.